If there's one thing that Leo season brings to the 5D collective, those of us who are the feminines of the 5D collective. So <laughs> let me explain. Uh, you have feminine and masculine energies. And we use words here at HP very fleetingly. Divine, not divine, spiritual. They, they all mean the same thing. So today, as I continue to get enlightened with words, yes, whether you want to say to me, Maria, true spirituality, or restored embodiment, self-aware, and so your mammalian heritage, I'm attachment trauma for I say, yes, one and in the same, and you're not a flat line. Anytime you meet anyone who is a laundry in their body, they're not a feminine. They're primarily a masculine. There's no feminine to be found. No, wait, I'm so sorry. Remember, food for thought, uh, your inner child, yes. Is it alive? So, on that note, anything true sticks around. You know why? Because a consistent contingent communicator is a securely attached feminine here, inner child. My body is my wise body with emotions. They're deep. They're not laundry, Zen master. I really don't know where you're learning about attachment trauma, but maybe you think you know everything. I don't know. Or maybe you think that making the conversation about how to watch out for those who are charlatans essentially what this human being was trying to say to people oh yes i forgot in the short i shared with you something about hearing yeah so mindfulness mind sight again they all mean the same thing to your host let me explain to you like you're a five-year-old so that maybe you can understand because also polyamory people apparently overestimate the usage of your brain. I find that hard to believe because I am not the smartest kid on the block. Give me a mathematical equation. Watch my mind go blank and stare and say, I don't like that. I don't understand that. But what I know is I have two hands and two feet and I can ask a gazillion questions and someone, someone out there, if I wanted, if me, Maria, the one-year-old, three-year-old, <laughs> I'm not ashamed of asking questions because see, this is what happens when you get a child-centric environment and you don't get shamed because of your emotions. Anyone, anyone. It's really common sense, FYI, for he here. <laughs> I feel apparently this thing called feminine and the spirituality journey, the human beings who are on Elsa's journey now understand so many things. So here's the breakdown on this lovely, what is it? 8-7. Eight, Tomorrow's 8-8. Eight, eight. <laughs> you know what love is? It's an inner child who says, yeah, you don't... <laughs> Don't love me, it's okay. I'm a four-year-old who got rejected, and I'm an eight-year-old who got disowned. Do you think that any human being, man, oh, by the way, that will fuck me, feel contempt, disgust towards me, and then shame, and I'm an active, empowered woman, so I'm not going to keep a man on a leash, which is why whenever I see Venus, the goddess of May, I'm like, wow, she looks pretty fancy. I know who's falling for her, as well as the god of Mars. Yes, falling, F-A-L-L-I-N-G. I told my teenage friends a couple of things. So far in my lifetime, I'm 44. There's one man who's been smart enough to notice how I work, and they are so smart that they expand my brain whenever I talk to them. Yes, I said one. Now, granted, there's 8 billion people out there, and I don't get out often. I'm a busy woman. This human being man, he impressed me. Yes, I, I love thinking about how he impresses me more and more as he takes ownership of his own inner child because, see, that's what it's called, to learn healthy self-worth. It's, oh, look, I'm worthy. <laughs> I'm a human being, and I laugh and smile all with an open heart of saying, yeah, that, that's right, that's true, <laughs> and I can't wait till you own that you are one of a kind because that's exactly what a feminine knows. Rabbi, <laughs> oh, we're not going to keep you on a string. That's too much work. Did you think love equated work for me? It doesn't. I get accepted with my flaws. I'm an annoying human being child <laughs> with my mother. That's the one person who still gets to put up with my three-year-old. Oh, and my twin. So you are determined, as Robert Sapolsky likes to share, the fact that he says there's no God and no free will, well, that's his opinion, <laughs> subjective. He doesn't have the quantitative data. A smart human being will know the difference between quantitative and qualitative, which is why all of these disclaimers. It's Maria, food for thought, please, no blanket statements. Did you not know that your emotions and thoughts like mine are not irrefutable facts? Because see, I learned that as an eight-year-old that it is so. Not irrefutable facts because I got disowned and I got told it's not true. And I remember the feeling. I thought I was no longer a sister. I felt. See, I used the word thought. I need to start replacing it. It's a feeling. So when people feel defective, they think they're defective, which is why their left mode lies to them. But then they go around telling people like me that we're fake. We're pretending to be happy. Because apparently any person who is in the fetal position crying feels, ah, let me go back to that. So whenever I see Venus, a goddess of May, or God of Mars, 
And anytime I see people who do fall for shit, I know that they could use a person called Patrick Tiahan. He's a childhood trauma survivor. He's healed and healing. He's a therapist. So anyone who is still in the absence of their own self and healthy self-worth needs first therapy. Then you come do true spirituality because it's not a career and it's not a fancy mantle. So I'm going to break it down to you like a five-year-old again. Spirituality and this relationship. Oh, yes, there is a relationship. 5D mystic ain't going to try to prove it, which is why when sciences people say, please don't bring me your woo-woo stuff, I've had to witness human being adults in class act pouty because they got told about woo-woo. You know how inside I was like, what? You didn't know that sciences are going to find you ridiculous? I know about it. I have faith. I got told that I have faith because I'm afraid of dying, which I am, just not terrified. And when I say I'm afraid, I try to explain it because people are like, don't worry about it. No, no, you don't understand. Marcus Aurelius already gave me the answer to that part. I, I do. No, I don't worry about it. I don't like it. L-I-K-E. And here's where our lovely said guru. So a divine feminine already knows, which is why sometimes like, you know what? Screw you. I still don't like it, you know, and that's all that happens. It's, Screw you. I take it back. I, I didn't mean it, you know, and you grow up and you actively know that you don't need to bow down in shame as if you got some master over you. Anyone, anyone have a pure consciousness relationship. What is beautiful is knowing how to explain to you, you have secondary consciousness like I do. So any human being who does not marry Shiva, I will know them. They're a flat line and they don't have fun in life. They actively do not wake up knowing, oh, look, I give meaning and then I can take it away. Oh, look, I could be in the most worst of emotional pains and I'm the one who's working with it. I learned from my class. I'm, I'm finishing up my certificate for mindfulness to integrate it. And as I hear these lectures, I'm like, what is this? They make it sound like it's so hard to do. It's very easy to use my brain. Wait a minute, though. I'm using my blade, the thinking and feeling one. Ah, I see the ones who are under the illusion that it's, what was it, Zen Master? Laundry. So there are some people who they just go on this bandwagon of using sales pitches. And while on earth, you got the 7 of 14 charming, they're the first ones in line near my volcano that my smart man friend got me to think about. Because I'm like, you know what? You posed to me some really great equations. And it's fair and square because if ever I have someone mean come to me and say with a gun on my head, hey, you have to put people in a volcano because otherwise, because you know what happens when you say you find all human beings worthy? When you say you unconditionally love all people, when you inform people of your polyamory status too, because you want to hear when, when you say you forgive all people, all, hey, whenever you exaggerate, <laughs> apparently no one likes to hear that some of us we love. I mean, I got taught it by Jesus and God that we're all brothers and sisters. I got taught how not to desire. I got taught how to be a decent human being and any person that's ever come my way to challenge it. I'm like, I made a promise and I didn't get told that I was going to have to treat people like shit. No, otherwise I would never have promised because I'm a three-year-old. Does anybody not understand this? I think you're following. Okay. So I, I saw this lady. She talks about this. Uh, what is it called? When you're empathic empathy so she's got a they, they like these continuums the sciences people because they like to measure stuff the quantitative analysis ones not the ones that speak like i do i'm the pseudoscience lady so she's got this continuum <laughs> and it's like there's all on this other end of the line excessively empathic whatever blah 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 so people who will do kindness and selflessness and i'm like okay are we doing another measuring so you know who wants to weigh things anyone anyone know who wants to weigh Okay, let me get to some of my quotes first. Here's one. If you think you can half-heartedly love someone, there is no love. It is either 100% or zero. So feminine, again, rabbi, and I'm mentioning a rabbi who will never probably meet me, but I watched his video as he said that us feminines, we want to nurture by containing and pulling. Yeah, no, that's not what, ha no. <laughs> that makes it hard work. Can go there's a door i don't want you around as you drink and do drugs and actively do torture chamber shit whatever it is you can go there's plenty of good therapists or people who will conduct themselves and tell you to do a good job C completely canceling out the updated good information on what integration is which is where your brain wants to head oh and what was it restorative embodiment i don't need lucifer or a fallen angel to explain to you what people with unresolved trauma 
end up. I, I've seen it. I mean, I know pretty much 80%. I know the scientists people are going to keep proving what they're already proving. It's not hard to know what I am because I'm pure consciousness like you are. Anyone, anyone understand? If you're following, good. Stay on board. If you're not, it's okay. You can go with the ones who want laundry in their body. Everything in existence is the same energy. Thank you, Sadhguru, for being here, manifesting itself in a million different ways. You know what I know when I see Elsa Journey people? Show yourself. I'm dying to meet you. Our manifestation powers. And they sound like superheroes on the cartoons I watched. And I'm like, yeah, I mean, I know what Reiki is. I'm a Reiki master. I also know how to surround people with my magical brain. And I also know what pseudo-liveness looks like. And that actively, when you're being taught by somebody who doesn't even recognize that they have pseudo-liveness, which means that they need a therapist, which means that they still don't actively look at themselves and notice, wait, I do structural dissociation and clinical dissociation in a classroom where I'm teaching people and I'm looking out like that. So I wonder, these grown-up human beings who are within the field, do they not hear their teachers? <laughs> That's where manifesting, no, mindfulness, no, yes, and mindful listening. And I just learned about mindful listening. <laughs> and I'm like, mindful listening, mindful talking. I've been doing it my entire life. This is not a special gift. What's up with this stuff? <laughs> Wait a minute, I need to talk about this. Okay, so here's the thing. Your feminine is your body, the divine. <laughs> your divine masculine is your brain. And actively, if you have secure attachment and healthy self-worth, you don't get lost. And thank you, Jesus. Give me a high five. So I definitely can thank Jesus and God, but I'm a 44-year-old woman who has all these words, and they're all embodied knowledge. Rabbi, come on over, please. Where's my notes? Because that rabbi, he gave me something really interesting to share with you. Oh, and I always integrate it all like this. So spiritual, spirituality, and sciences, it all comes together because it all says the same shit. But it's not shit for those of us who love. It's only shit for the ones who have nightmares. In fact, the ones who have nightmares, we don't play. Pinocchios, they actively stay on the island. They actively listen to the donkeys. They don't realize what's going on. And that is because what happens when, where are you, said guru? May your decisions be based upon what truly matters and works, not upon your likes and dislikes. Let me think about the men and women that I see out there using their sales pitches. What did I say? I said, yeah, oh, I don't find it hard to understand what goes on because manipulation, well, I mean, anyone know what manipulators do? Every one of you manipulates. I manipulate words all the time. The difference is I'm curious, open, accepting, and loving. So I'm a divine feminine because my body is Maria's and my divine masculine is my brain and I use the left and right mode. And then I learned why I don't like not knowing things. Oh, also I'm committed to what I do, not because of likes and dislikes, because I chose as an eight-year-old, I want to help people. And I realized I want to help them to be their self. And now I know if you need a therapist, that's where you're going to go first. Then you can be yourself. Because people say, why would they need you? Well, we're creatures of habit. And apparently that neuroplastic agent, yeah, it's imagination. A lot of people have a bullshit chit-chatter. It's called the inner critic. And then they do the outer critic. And I see them all over the place. They don't seem to take ownership of their one-year-old, so they don't know what love is. They think love is bullshit like this. Ladies, come on over. <laughs> Make sure to know if he fucks you, he won't marry you. Thank you, lady. <laughs> and all these women laughing, and I'm thinking, wow. I'm wondering, are they listening to the man who tells you when he feels contempt, disgust? Do you feel shame? Because I did notice in college years, and then as I got older, that women and men would fuck each other and not be happy, and I'd tell them all, why are you doing it? They all answered the same way. I'm like, excuse me, you don't have to do anything you're not getting pleasure from it and you're actively feeling guilty i'm gonna say that don't do it what what the fuck excuse me i don't understand why you don't understand what i'm speaking to you <laughs> then you know what adaptive child are thank you terry real so that's why i don't speak to people that are adaptive children because they're not actively listening to me first they would need to want to listen and then you see people with sad guru as he's explaining to you how to respond versus react and a dude in the audience argues with sad guru about Lifting a fucking woman off the floor. I'm not even joking, women, men, and days. This guy, he interrupted him three times. Three. I counted it because I'm like, he answered you. He answered you. He answered you. And you're still arguing about lifting an old lady or whoever it is because you didn't make her fall. And you're a grown human being, man. And I'm thinking, what the fuck is wrong with you? And then I'm like, nothing's wrong with him. There we go. We should treat people as 
Marsha Linian, PhD. Your behavior might be a problem, but that doesn't mean you're a problem. No, you are a human being who does not understand what your professor or guru just told you, and you paid money to go here, and you're arguing with the person who's presenting to the equation of wisdom. I'm like, not even, I don't overestimate the usage of the brain. I'm a stupid lady. I'm just thinking, okay, adaptive child. Wait, Stephen Porges, what was it again? So when people are in their yellow or red, they can't hear you, which is why they will distort messages. Uh, it's amazing how people will distort something I tell them, like thinking that my twin flame or flames mean trauma. Again, the ones are smart, like my smart man. Yeah, he observed and he's like, you know what? Okay, I believe you now. And that's smart. Why? Because he listened, then he observed. He's like, okay, I can tell. Walking to walk, talking to talk. But I want to poke around a little bit. Let me make sure. So we like to make sure this is not poking around with intent, by the way. It's how you get to meet people. And that's what's nice is that we don't hide ourselves from each other when we like each other. That's because you can only like each other if you truly are into getting to know each other. Anyone, anyone know what a just genuine relationship is? Because seriously. <laughs> okay, but you have to have a genuine relationship with yourself. So that's the part. Feminine maskins it's you and then if you know how to do this thing stop giving yourself away to the lowest bidder thank you patrick tiahan so as he shares he says i forget where i heard the lowest bidder in terms of dating but it makes so much sense to me as childhood trauma survivors our sense of self-worth is off and a uh, symptom of that is dating beneath us so i don't agree with the dating beneath because we're all one big ball of energy but i'm not a not healthy self-worth person so I have never dated somebody that I don't want to. I'll say, no, I'm not interested. That's it. If I am interested, I will say I'm interested. Now, if I actively am really interested, I'm going to make sure you know it. But I'm not going to, like any other person, make any types of step forward if you're not actively sticking around and continuing to consistently communicate with me. Because the minute you're off your game, it means you're not interested. You're amygdala. I'm not going to work hard to keep you around that that again rabbi not how it works so what i wanted to share about the embodied knowledge yes here you will have wisdom when you get to hear knowledge so that's abstract right when you analyze it and process it that's when you understand it that's from within you and when you internalize it and make it yours experientially, that's integrated knowledge. So because I'm a human, whenever I'm hearing any of the attachment trauma, I'm like, yeah, okay, 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 got it, got it, got it. Spirituality, same thing goes. Okay, so you want to do spiritual self-help? When? When you're ready to be a human being. You need to know how to be yourself. So the question I would get asked, why do they need you? Oh, you're a creature of habit. And apparently people don't know how to think or feel deeply without making it into... What was it? Let's go watch the lovely Venus, a goddess of May, as she informs people who go, because see, when you don't actively want to feel deeply, you say, I have laundry, Maria. It's hard to feel and everything's bullshit. And that's when people turn their back on God. It's exactly what they all did. People suck, Maria. People this. Yeah, sure, sure. Keep talking. I, I haven't heard anything new since I was a teenager. That's the minute that I noticed that what I had got taught at my catechism was true. Anytime you got a pebble in your shoe, it's God's fault. That's it. So it's not about the fallen angel. I also know about that one. And again, Robert Sapolsky, thank you for your service because determined does matter. So does getting childhood trauma therapy. So as long as you see somebody overdoing it with fucking drinking, drugging, and any of that bullshit statement of human suck, evil sucks, all sucks, yeah, you can keep talking. A person like me is going to say, that's not news. You're not interesting, but you are a person. I'll make sure to try and see you to the best of my ability because apparently when you consistently communicate to a human being that you're uninterested at all in becoming friends and then they get a moment of basically something in their shoe, then they come out and, uh, you know, I, I find it hilarious, passive aggressive, that term, I haven't met it. But then again, I don't care when people talk to me in their low self esteem, in the way that a person who has also low self esteem would care. Because I'm hearing the child whining, and I feel bad. And that's about it. And I'm looking for this Venus, the goddess of May, who shared this, uh, are you chasing happiness the wrong way? 
Oh, the painful truths about happiness and love. Painful truths. I love how they're always harnessing that pain point. So people who I do learn from, and again, I'm an online marketer and entrepreneur. I don't do sales pitches. That's actively, what's the word? Ah, I do not disrespect. So see, here's where the thing is. The divine feminine, you have free will, my lovely masculine. Does anybody notice the eyes? Look at the eyes right now. Because see, it's not about being a smart ass. This is actively what I got taught about from God and Jesus. I'm giving you two options. You get two options. Here's your choice point. Let me ask you. And actually, I want to quote a lovely human being. She's a tarot reader because she made a lot of sense. And I'm like, you know what? I know how to explain it like a five-year-old, and I'm not trying to prove a point. I'm explaining something because you've got a one-year-old like I do. Mine is independent. She doesn't need a thumbs up. My three-year-old is independent too. You know why? Because my caregiver, she allowed me to be all of me. <laughs> I have no shame button. You can poke it. <laughs> I'm just thinking, how many more Cuscos can I meet and have a good time with? Because apparently the ones who actively, yeah, they're not going to be around me. They, they won't want to see this. You know why? Oh, wait, let me explain it. It's not protection the way the 4D with their little mantles. When I use my prefrontal cortex, I am an authentic self. I'm called a somatic empath. I'm called a lot of things if I use attachment trauma. and No trauma charges in my brain. You know what happens when a person doesn't deal with whatever shit comes up, every ascension energy, and they look in my eyes? Yeah, you look in my eyes, what your eyes hold is everything that your brain and embodiment holds. If you have trauma charges and they come up, that's the minute of truth. So... You're either going to be comfortable and soothed because you're going to want to welcome your fragments or the opposite. And if it's the opposite, you're not going to like me. But if I'm just meeting you, that's okay, right? So you're a stranger. You're going to not want to be around me at all. I'm not protected in this way of being protected by some human being who is owned by some demon. No, it's going to be a human being who has trauma charges to the extent of something horrible horrible. In fact, now that I know about a lot of things, I'm thinking about this thing that happened. I'm like, wow, shit, that fucked up. I'm not going to share the story. I just know that I was like, okay, that makes so much sense. And it was a choice point, not mine. No, no, not mine. My choice point, I made it. I made it knowingly what I was choosing. And I knew what I was being asked, because that's when you remember we're all part of the same energy. Every single human being is a brother and sister of mine and all life form. That's what true spirituality is. You don't need a sad guru to tell it to you. I got told it by Jesus and God, though, as I was being raised with what were good catechism, true people of faith, not the ones who are talking about Reiki as evil energy or yoga as bringing demons out of you. No, no. That, those are people who don't actively want to bring humanity together. They want their group to be the triumphant one which sounds ridiculous in the ears of a person of true faith. <laughs> you actively think that a textbook from the medieval times is applicable to the year 2024. You must have fallen. Oh, I'm so sorry, 7 to 14 Charming. The grand jealousy of the human beings, they're the same ones who will not in any way, shape, or form know what happens to them if they come near the vicinity of a human being who has the capacity to be authentically their self. It is not a magical power. It is called you have an embodied brain and so do I. You have trauma charges if they're not healed. I don't because I don't have emotional charges. I have emotions. No laundry Zen master. Really, you could keep working that mindfulness muscle if you wanted to. You don't have to talk about the pain point. Anytime I'm hearing nature, when, when people want to take nature, this is the other dude. Nature is full of suffering and they really want to hone it in. I've had people do it to me. It gets really uncomfortable because I know what they're talking about and I know what I'm going to be feeling. But I don't get triggered because I know that it's an emotion. You see, the 14-month-old isn't, oh, my God, I'm feeling something. No, I'm just going to be uncomfortable. And then what I'm going to do is make sure I don't talk to those people anymore. I will actively say, yep, you're out. Oh, I won't tell you, though. I'm just, you're out. That's it. And in fact, it's my ears that are going to tune you out because you're actively doing something uncomfortable. And who knows what's going on inside of you. But let me go and find my lovely tarot. So as Ezotero mentions, she says, the power that you can have does not lie in how a person receives what you have to give, but the power lies in giving with the sake of wanting to and not worrying about how it will be received. 
She then goes on to say, people can disempower themselves so long as they believe that other people knowing about their emotions have, means that these people have power over them. Yes, those are all masculines. The feminine will notice it, which is why we'll leave you alone because we don't want to make you uncomfortable. Because we notice you have a deal with emotions. It's called, I don't want to feel deeply. Come on in, attachment, trauma, information, people. It's all people with childhood shit, and they don't want to go to the therapist. And there you go. So they keep dating beneath themselves, and then they want to come tell me they know what love is. Love's a straight line. It's called, I'm consistently present because I'm not afraid to love or be vulnerable, which apparently a buttload of people go to therapy with their partners, and they don't want to be emotional. And I'm like, what, what, what? Okay, so right now we're talking in this Lionsgate portal about true love. True love is not fear. Fear means you don't love. Fear means nothing except for you could use the Patrick Tia hand so that you can learn how to love yourself first. Then come talk to me about spiritual self-help and anything spirituality. You know how many mystics are out there with their little woo-woo powers? Yeah, that's something that I'm going to leave alone because 3D, 4D, I thought they would awaken. I, I did. And spiritual awakening, see, Esotero, she's smart. She just doesn't know it. It is a slow process. The only ones who think that it's that are the same ones who actively are going to stick to the pseudo-liveness. And I've seen what it looks like because I have good attachment trauma information. People, therapists. And they showed it to me in screen as I'm learning about dissociative disorders. I'm like, I saw that look. Oh my gosh, I saw that one. And when I saw DID, I'm like, okay, I know a couple of people that have DID and disorder. Oh, they don't want to go. It's true. I got the, the fact checker. Yes, there's a person. They know about their alters. They said, yeah, I don't want to go because they're going to give me pills. I don't need pills. I'm like, you're right. You don't need pills. But FYI, there's good therapists out there that they will work with you if you want. I can share with you the network so that you can get somebody who knows what you're going through and doesn't actively give you some death sentence which is bullshit so there's two groups right now the 5d collective smart human beings who actively want to do emotions okay so as a terror as she shares emotions she says are just data and ultimately they're just learning to process it's just learning to process this data more accurately and make more heart-centered decisions as a result okay so you being spiritually awoken is you being awakened to your inner child number one Two, it's you becoming the owner of your emotional and mental plane. And three, you won't be anywhere near this if you don't actively notice that you have a Cusco attitude with humanity overall. And that's because the part about you're disempowered if you tell a human being, I love you to the death of me. I don't want a life without you. Okay, so we're going to get to that one-year-old, and then we're going to close this one. And we're going to have another episode. I don't even know what the title is going to be of this one. But the masculine energy of every one of us gives us the capacity to do. And this is here. And the feminine gives you the energy to be. When you have the wisdom of the body, it's because you own all that arises deeply. Mindfulness, mind sight, and anything here in inner growth, it means you're going to tap into thoughts and emotions. You're going to want to tap into it deeply. And that's because you will only be, in fact, a person who's going to like IHP content. Let me read you what I wrote. That way you can hear it. When you're ready to be real in life and with people in your relationships, that means you do know healthy self-worth and you know how to love yourself first. Otherwise, you don't know what love is. And you chasing happiness. Happiness is one of the emotions that can be a constant in you, as all the other ones do. We don't do boo-hoo-hoo, I cried, oh no, they don't want me, I'm brokenhearted in a way that can, I will die. No, none of that. The, the people who feel like that, they actively could use good therapists versus being online following Venus, a goddess of May, or God of Mars. But the 7 to 14 Charming, they're not attracting people because those people are dumb. No, no, go near them. Watch them tell you, how dare you put off of the pedestal my leader. <laughs> Oh, really? Your leader, huh? Good boy. Good girl. That's exactly what I'm thinking inside, and a divine feminine doesn't find that appealing at all. If I need to keep you on a leash, excuse me, you're not a... You're, I need to step away now, and that's what I'm going to do with my eyes because I don't want to look at anyone with those eyes. That's where disrespect comes into the mix because I can't lie, and there are men... They notice my eyes. I like one of my man friends. 
he he's the smart one we're all smart but see the thing is we're all embodied brains and so we all will pick up on each other and i'm thinking right now because he's done this a couple of times to me and i'm like come on dude stop it and it's because i don't mean to do it but he can recognize it and so he's pointed it out and i love it so that's what intimacy is by the way it's when two people doesn't mean that you touch each other. Intimate does not involve touching, by the way. No, that sex stuff is nothing for a feminine unless we actively have true intimacy. That means that we have a bond. If we don't have a bond, you can go, shoo, shoo. Uh, you're not interesting uh, to me physically at all, not even a little bit. And that's, I'm just going to leave that there. So you're going to be comfortable here at HP when you're ready to be real in life and when you're ready to be in relationships, respecting people means you know that nobody deserves to be looked at in any way because it's not your job, my job, our job to tell people how to behave like the quote I read you and really what it is is they need a therapist, not you, not me, not anyone. Okay, so love is not hard. All these gender stereotypes are for dumb people in my book. Any person, D-U-M-B, not dumb because they don't know how to be in a book. No, they can regurgitate. They don't know their emotional intelligence or mental intelligence. They don't know anything yet about their one-year-old. So they don't even know what love looks like. They know it from the fairy tales of movies and not even because that's all not love. Love is not I'm going to poke at you in a way of making you think I'm going to stick around. Those are people who are emotionally unavailable. They're afraid of love is why a woman or a man or they that has their divine feminine will know you don't want to love me you're afraid of it once you have enough of you understanding this you will know when someone's closed off don't don't be near me just stay away it's okay i don't want to make you have anything to do with me it's actually quite sad when people refuse love because they don't become aware that they're refusing it because they don't have healthy self-worth when we watch people walk away why don't you walk away yes so when we watch people walk away rabbi believe me it ain't painful to start something new because the starting something new is the opportunity to expand together you're going to notice if somebody's going to fizzle out the minute that they make themselves absent that's it oh yeah you close that heart you think we don't know closing a heart is immediately something a divine feminine will know and we will immediately leave it alone. In fact, I appreciate my avoidance because that's where I don't like the panicky ones. Yes, the poorest boundary people. The avoidance, they shut themselves off so you don't perceive them anymore. The clingy ones, you have to teach. Okay, I'm not going anywhere. Can you get off of my leg, please? Please get off of my leg. If I have to push you away, I'm going to push you away so that then maybe you'll understand how to moderate yourself. And that's actively, as a person who taps into the energetic sphere, how it feels. So I have personally never had an issue with my men. They're not mine property, meaning the men that I have chosen and that they may have chosen. Well, how does it work? Yeah, we chose each other. <laughs> so no clinginess. And when they make themselves absent, it's okay because I got shit to do. I'm not wasting my time thinking that, oh, my God, they don't love me. You know why? Because a man would have balls to say, I don't want you. I don't love you. Then not anything. If you don't know how to tell me what you want, I'm going to know you don't know what you want. That's it. I'm not going to keep you around. We didn't start anything. <laughs> we didn't do shit. You see, there's no shame in love. There's none of it. That's what love is. No shame. No shame. Anyone who doesn't know this yet is because they're trying to say, oh, look, I have, I have a tail. I'm going to be the mermaid that goes and gives my voice up. No, no. Oh, I, I got a tail. You like it? No. There's a door. See you later. It's why we don't negotiate. We just say this is what you got. You don't have to take anything. That's where love is not a... Uh, I'm going to hold you on a string. So people who are afraid to tell somebody they love you, they actively don't know what love is. And as I was saying, so it's when you know healthy self-worth that you'll be ready to be here. And when you know how to love yourself first, in the meantime, if you don't want to get there, that's something that is completely elsewhere. Spiritual self-help, personal development, and these practices that we get to do are effective and bring benefits to the people who want to own their embodied brain. If it's challenging, the therapists help you to get to where you have a window of welcome. Your one-year-old is what you want to own, and that's when 
you will be ready to be in these lovely relationships where we are going to grow mentally, emotionally, and physically. So tickling our brains, the hearts and bodies is actively something fun. And that's because, again, nobody is afraid of love. When you build relationships that value and appreciate you for being you, that's when you'll know love. And love is not a fleeting moment, not for a 5D mystic and not for a 5D person, which is basically an individual with healthy self-worth. They don't have unfinished business. They have, I know who I am, and I know my name, and I want to grow, deepen, and expand infinitely with a heart. If there's one thing that love is, it's appreciating each other and desiring to be around each other as constant life partners. You don't want to talk to me only once. You want to talk to me consistently. The fact that people don't know how this is not going away, but that it is also not where you get into a, um, what's it called? Let me pause. We'll have another episode for that. So again, thank you for stopping by. I love that we have this amazing energy from our 8-8 portal. And this is a one of a kind. We might have more of these. I didn't plan on the script or the title, like I said. So again, thank you for stopping by. Like, share, and subscribe. And please do be aware when you do meet unkindness, these are all people who need a good therapist. If you meet any of the 7 to 14 charming and you are a person who notices, then you're going to be here because you know exactly what I was talking about. Divine feminine and divine masculine, feminine masculine, your inner child, your body, your mind. It's called somatics, which is why sensory motor, Pat Ogden, and also um, Peter Levine is good for you to find out about, Basil van der Kolk, Stephen Porges, uh, other people. But Pat Ogden is great with sensory motor. Diane Heller, she's good too. And a good therapist is not going to give you a death sentence. They're going to say EMDR, child parts work, and semantics, because, again, your body and mind. And you're not going to be whining about it and making it into a competition of how many pain points you got. If you're doing that, that's an Elsa journey. Whenever I'm hearing anybody whine about how rough it is, it's not about you sharing. Sharing is one thing. Whining is another. And I shouldn't say whining. It's more of let me highlight how painful shit is. Okay, you're actively doubling down. Because the expression of it's really deep, and I've heard people who are healing, which is why I can tell you there is a difference. When I hear Kylie, I'm going to use Kylie, my lovely Kylie, even though she doesn't know me, and she's not mine. When I say my, it's not mine, not my property at all. It's just something that I have this tendency, because I'm a, you know, hugger and all. But um, she and her sociopath boyfriend, they had a moment because he told her, you're the one, and she split. And she is also, besides borderline, she's also narcissist. Her borderline is in remission, and her narcissism is what she's working on. So she also shares what split looks like for narcissists. And it's really sad. So once a person has a lens, this is a good thing because then they can know how to work with themselves like Kylie does and her boyfriend and with a good therapist. So she and her boyfriend there's this moment he tells her this thing you're the one she splits on him and i think it's before i don't remember that part she knows how to tell her story better but long story short she says no i'm not she throws all of his stuff out everything and she basically says we're done and he saves all these things and i don't remember how long it took her to get back into herself but she realized what happened and she then approached him and they got back together and he saved all her stuff that's because these are two people who are authentically healing. They know what they're dealing with. They talk about their life, and they're not trauma-bonded because they have good therapists. They don't talk about what they're doing as some big thing. No, you can tell when it's genuine, if you're a person who's genuine yourself. If you're not, then you're going to not be tuning in again. This is where I already know the ears of people, one, will hear what they want to hear out of anything, and that's people who don't notice themselves. And I notice them, and I leave it alone because, again, we're not here to tell Cusco's, oh, Cusco, I know you're lying to me. No, I'm not going to tell you. A divine feminine rabbi, a feminine energy does not tell the masculine. I can tell that you're hopping over a fence, masculine, because the masculine is doing it on purpose, by the way. They actively know at least something about what's going on, and they actively know that their heart is closed and they're choosing it. 
any person I've ever met knows if they want to be open and vulnerable or if they're going to hide themselves. It's a straightforward. That's your free will. That's your choice point. That's when you're going to tell me if you want to build with me or not. I'm not going to tell you I know your heart's closed because I'm going to know it's closed or it's clingy. And the clingy, I manage. The closed, I leave it alone. I'm not going to force you to open up. What do you think love is? I'm not going to hold you by a string, masculine. No, no. You don't tap into your infinite potential by me holding you back. That's the whole point of why a smart human being would know that a feminine, but that's only if they gather and get out of those stupid gender stereotypes, by the way. And they're stupid because they're stereotypes. And the people who do quantitative and qualitative data analysis, well, they're just as egoic if they're not wise and empowered. So whenever we see the wise and empowered ones, we know who they are because they will bring it all together and they will also make sure to tell you, hey, we don't know everything. We know some things. So true sciences and true spirituality, they leave you open-ended. That's the whole point because we don't know everything. And any human being who doesn't like that and they say, oh, but the brain falls out of your ass. Really? I got another human being who doesn't know how to use their brain Because the minute I gave you uncertainty, unknown, and unexpected, and I said there's more that is a potential, you freaked out on me. You just said that's not possible. Well, I'm going to say there's a lot of things that are possible. And what's possible is that whenever I meet Cusco, I leave it alone (laughs) as I don't want to piss people off. I'm a curious person, a divine feminine, pure consciousness. When you are unconditionally loving in form, (laughs) you're not trying to get people pissed in their pants. And that's where I learned how to leave it alone because I'm just having a conversation. I didn't realize you were trying to prove yourself, adaptive child. I wasn't trying to give you a thumbs up or a thumbs down. I'm not actually your parent. You see? <laughs> that's not love. I ain't your parent. I didn't decide to be my partner's parent. Anyone? Anyone. Okay, so let's go back to Patrick, shall we? Because he has a good one for that one. And it's uh, not the one about the uh, let's stop giving ourselves, yes, to the lowest bidder. That's something hopefully all people will understand. It's this one. We can't demand that our partners help us emotionally regulate while processing our childhood abusers onto them. Yes. So people who don't own their one-year-old, yeah, and their three-year-old, and then they don't know, this is where becoming who we are got paused, not lost. Thank you, Patrick Jan, again. So when people grow up with childhood abuse and they have dysfunction, toxic, they get stuck. Once they get the sense of self lens, then they're beginning a journey, okay? So again, it's once you know yourself and it's not by re-traumatizing yourself, no. We help people go back in time not to relive their experiences, which is re-traumatizing, but to go back in time to change their experiences, to get in touch and give compassion to their younger self, Howard Schubiner, MD. Okay, so it's once you have yourself in the forefront that you do true spirituality, which is, as our lovely said guru has shared, not a career. The spiritual process is not a career. It is a way of life. And he also talks about this. Where are you? There's a bigger sentence. I know I read it to you already, but this is for anybody who did not tune into those episodes. And I have a lot of different pieces of content that are confused right now but I'm going to find it because I'm determined (laughs) to bring it to you right now. Here it is. There is something within you which is longing to be spiritual. Spiritual does not mean looking up or looking down or praying or going to the temple. Spiritual essentially means you are in an experience which is beyond the limitations of the physical. That means you are in a boundless space. This longing is always there in every human being. Either you are approaching it in installments or you are consciously going for the ultimate. That one-year-old is who you want to own and the three-year-old. And you also want to um, be aware, of course, of talking to people about whatever it is that you will have so you will know, again, yourself if you are ready for love. And with this 8-8 portal, we're going to have some more channeled guidance messages and uh, food for thought and all of this beautiful, beautiful stuff that we have at the 5D Collective. Because creation is a dance, we said the divine is a dancer, said Guru, which is why a divine feminine doesn't do anything except for tango. 
Okay, so we don't give you a chokehold, we don't pull on you, we don't give you meaning when you wake up in the morning. You give yourself meaning like you can take it away. And it doesn't get harder to love or to live life, and it's not scary to say I love you. This is the one thing that if there's anyone who actively gets to have romance, they will know how to tell you how they grow old together. And when people say, I don't believe in growing old together, really? Okay, sure you don't. It's our mammalian heritage to want to have at least one consistent, contingent communicator because we're mammals. And out with nature, we would die. That bear is going to eat you alive. And anyone who doesn't understand this, they still have a trust break towards our lovely human species. And it's understandable because of, again, we don't need to blame Lucifer, devils, demons. We don't even need to bring God into the mix if we don't want to because attachment and trauma shares with us that one year of life. Attachment system, you got it. You have a zero one attached panicky, three to seven shame submissive. A freeze of all ages, a fight 11, 12, and a fight 14, 15, 16. Thank you, Sue Martin. Those are your charge states. Get a hold of them. Become your higher self. That's where I'm at. You're a grown-up. Now, don't project shit at people. Then you get to move into functional adult love language. Come on over. If you can't do that yet, there's Terry Real. He talks about adaptive child pattern behaviors. And then there's Patrick Chan too. Get your unfinished business. And then you're going to know how to actually love yourself first, which means you know how to love a human being, which means you know how to be a safe haven, secure base. That's what love is in the first place. Stephen Porges, he didn't write the book with his wife because the publisher said, oh, no, people want drama. They think it's all suffering. So we have two groups. Here's the human love group over here at IHP. And in fact, anyone who is going to have inner and outer well-being and put actively into practice mindfulness, mindset, meditation, yoga the right way, not with the uh, Elsa journey. They're, they're doing pseudo-aliveness. Again, leave it alone. They have a role. It's a long story. As a divine feminine, because see, I am a divine feminine. It's my divine masculines that are the ones who poke at me and remind me there's always a balance. And that's because, again, we're all the same piece of energy manifested in different ways, but the feminine is the nurturer. And the masculine is the protector. And the masculine sees on the aerial side, and the feminine is on the ground. And so once more, a true divine feminine knows that the masculines are complementary. They don't ever come in to hurt us, quote unquote. Even if they do, the divine feminine will know, I'm going to learn something from this because I know how to rise above. Why? Because there's one feminine. And in the absence of the feminine, which is your inner child, in the absence of your alignment with Purusha Prakriti, you don't manifest shit, masculine or masculines. And again, this is not a competition. It is called the mind and body in harmony. And when you understand it from attachment trauma, humanly speaking, and not from some stupid asshole movie that people consistently, those, there's people who get on screen and they begin shouting and telling you all about who they are and how special and how they're hiding from I just said that, that, all these stories. <laughs> I can't even believe we got people who are going to try and prove that reality doesn't exist with AI. But then again... We are all creators, so some people, 3D, 4D, are interested in stuff like that. So I'm just going to leave that one alone. <laughs> but my brain is tickled by my fancy. Oh, with Sabine, who, who, who has this? I think her, her picture is like this. What are they going to do? Because she's a physics, quantum physics lady. But um, <laughs> I love her. So with that being said, uh, when you're grounded in reality, even though you're the woo-woo spiritual pseudoscience podcast host, I'm still <laughs> mesmerized by the fact that there are people who <laughs> don't know anything about, oh, okay, let me pause. Oh my gosh, this is going to be a beautiful 8-8. Eight, eight. Who knows what surprise for the 5D collective. Come on over and uh, thank you for stopping by. If you watch the entirety of it, I know that some people have a short attention span, but I also know that when you are intrigued and following that you stick around, which is what I love. So IHP community, welcome. We're going to have another episode later on. In the meantime, please, again, remember, we are not here to affect states of consciousness because those ears of, yeah, Pinocchio on that island, they don't hear anything. <laughs> it's okay. We'll notice. Like I said, masculines that jump the fence, it's okay. The polyamory, we are securely attached, some of us. We have healthy self-worth. We're not confused <laughs> at all, not even a little bit. So when someone loves 
when someone loves. Everybody loves somebody sometime. <laughs> and my place is here, so the divine feminine, even when we don't like where we have been put, we will know that we have been put somewhere. You don't get away from the wisdom of the body when you're a divine feminine. And I got lucky. So I have a mom, a twin, my family. I have Jesus and God. And then I got to get these clairs. And I did not get confused. I got attachment trauma informed. I got said guru. I got that other dude, the, the twin flame guy. He's on another roll. <laughs> oh, he's hilarious. But there's a bunch of I got my divine maskins, let me not forget, and maskins and feminines, all that great stuff. So empowered people. It's a beautiful day. So we'll be back again with more. Thank you for stopping by. And this smile, this is what happens if you're a divine feminine again and again and again and again. That doesn't mean we don't have the other emotions. We just aren't tortured by them. Because again, feeling deeply. <laughs> Did anybody not know? <laughs> how to be emotional as they grew up. Again, I got lucky, but I know that some of you got lucky like I did because what is life without romance? But romance is not you coming in and out of my life, no. And it's not you not feeling deeply. That, that's not even, no. <laughs> you can't do shit if you have no emotion with a person who's deep. Oh, and come tell me that I'm too much. Watch my eyes. <laughs> really? <laughs> Am I now? <laughs> You know, I have a tail, Eric, and I got a voice. I think that I'm going to splash my way out of here. <laughs> That's how it works. And it won't be, oh, I hope you're miserable. No, it'll be, I hope you're happy. <laughs> no, I know you'll be happy. <laughs> Eventually, it's like, okay, I see them being happy. That's how you process, oh, compersion, FYI. We have compersion. The ones of us who truly love, it doesn't matter if you're polyamory or monoamory. You're going to be, I, I want you to be happy. Equanimous. No ill will, divine feminine, one energy. Again, I'll repeat myself until you can figure it out. No closed heart. I chose as an adolescent, thanks Jesus and God, because I said, yeah, my brothers and sisters, I noticed that they're not reliable, they're unkind, they're liars. They seem to not know their free will choice, but I know mine. It's called, yes, I choose to be loving and to treat you the way I want to be treated. And I'm not afraid to tell you the truth. Why would I be afraid of telling you the truth? I know what the truth is for me, not for you. And you can keep on going like the energizer battery right here. Tune back in later. See you again soon.